Okay, hello and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all North and South Carolina students, sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers, CACRO, and StriveScan. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. We're glad that you're here. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started with this panel presentation. Uh, anyone attending this webinar, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and your microphone are both turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you, but again, they are um, going to be able to monitor the Q&A function on the screen. This is just one of many of the different sessions that are happening throughout this next week. So definitely be sure to check out the full schedule at cacro.org. That's C-A-C-R-A-O.org. And this presentation is being recorded and it will be available within about a week uh, that, on that same website. And that's again, C-A-C-R-A-O.org, cacro.org. And with that, I would now like to turn it over to our presenters. Awesome. Can everybody, um, Allison, Samantha, Kelly, does it feel like my screen, screen is shared correctly? Okay, perfect. Took a minute there. Awesome. Um, I'll introduce myself first, then uh, welcome everybody. We're so excited to have y'all on our virtual session today about choosing not only a college, um, but a home and exploring options in North and South Carolina, uh, in the city and mountains and the coast and, and really all over. So um, let me make sure I can figure out how to advance these slides here. Awesome. So I hope you see that map there. Perfect. Um, so I'll introduce myself first and then I'll turn it over to some of my colleagues here. My name is Jasmine. I work in the admissions office at Queens University of Charlotte. You can see right there where we're located. We are a small, private, comprehensive institution. Um, we offer 42 different majors in a ton of different disciplines, um, and we really blend that small school experience with uh, all the benefits of being in a big city, which obviously we'll talk about in a bit. Um, and we have students from all over the world. So I'm excited to talk with y'all a little bit today, and then I'll turn it over to Kelly. Uh, you wanna introduce yourself next? Sure, thanks Jasmine. Uh, like she said, my name is Kelly Spainauer, and I'm the representative for UNC Wilmington. Uh, in this panel, uh, we are one of we are the public university within the spectrum. Uh, we are considered the Coastal University of North Carolina. We have an overall about eighteen thousand students on campus. Uh, just a little over fourteen thousand of those are undergraduate students. So we're still considered one of the middle-sized universities within the university system. But we will get into the nitty-gritty of just what the coastal life is all about here in just a few minutes. My name is Samantha and I am here representing Mars Hill University. Um, we are a small private liberal arts institution in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Western North Carolina. We're about 20 minutes away from Asheville to kind of give you a little bit of a more geographical location. We only have about 1100 students, so we really do have that small personal feel, which is something that we pride ourselves on here at Mars Hill. We offer 34 different majors with a handful of different concentrations within those majors. Um, lots of different extracurricular opportunities, including Division II Athletics. And I will turn it over to Allison. Awesome. Thank you, Samantha. Uh, my name is Allison Blackwelder. I work at Winthrop University in Rock Hill, South Carolina. So it's about 30 minutes south of Charlotte and you know, a smaller, smaller kind of town feel. Um, so Winthrop is a four-year public we're considered medium size, although I'd say we're kind of on the smaller, the smaller end of medium. We have about 6,000 students, about 5,000 of those being undergraduate students. Um, and we have uh, 43 different majors with tons of different concentrations that span across, you know, kind of all fields from visual performing arts to business to education to the sciences. 
Awesome. So you know a little bit more about uh, who's represented in this panel today. The goal of our session is to really expose you all, whether you're students or families or uh, counselors in school setting, we're happy that you're here. And we want to talk to you about um, the opportunities that you have in North and South Carolina, not just from the college standpoint, but geographically. Um, you're quite um, blessed to be in a, a location that allows you easy access to cities, uh, towns, the coast, where you get the beautiful beach beaches, the beautiful mountains, um, all of that good stuff. And then I think students, oftentimes when you're thinking about where you want to attend a college or university, you're asking really good questions about what majors do you offer? What programs do you offer? Uh, what does the campus kind of feel like? What's the size? Those are great questions to ask. Uh, but you should also consider the location of where you're going to college. Um, these are often places that you're going to continue to stay once you graduate. Uh, you're going to get to benefit socially and professionally from these different locations, all in different ways. And so we want to really highlight that um, this afternoon. Cows. Um, so I'll click through and Kelly, just let me know that I'm on your, your right slide and then we'll go from there. All right, and maybe it's Samantha first, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's Samantha. My bad, Kelly. <laughs> you're fine, you're fine. So just a little bit about the mountains. We're gonna first talk about the vibe, then we're gonna hit on the different social aspects that you might encounter in the mountains. And then last, we're gonna cover your professional opportunities because these all might be a little bit different depending on the location that you're coming from. Um, first thing, the vibe of the mountains. So I've got you these pictures. They are all within 45 minutes from our campus here at Mars Hill. Um, the mountains offer you a unique experience because you get both that city vibe, depending on where you're at in the mountains, but you also get that very um, almost country life or more rural setting is something that we could also use there. Um, you've got a lot of nature around you, so there is that strong connection and focus on nature and because of that it's a little bit more chill a little bit more peaceful um, not quite so much hustle and bustle that you might find inside of a larger city um, and even when we have larger cities up in the mountains they still have that more rural feel as opposed to the big metropolitan areas um, if you like the great outdoors then the mountains might be um, an excellent place for you to be um, and the biggest pro that we have that maybe some of our other locations don't is the snow. So you, if you are a fan of the snow, this is right where you belong. Um, next, we'll bounce over to the social aspects. All right, so the social experience for the mountain life is going to be a little bit different um, than what you might encounter um, at a larger city. Um, it's a lot more laid back. It's a lot more focused on local community. Um, so everyone kind of knows everyone. There's more of that smaller town feel. So a lot of your experiences are going to be happening at smaller local areas. Um, the closed coffee shop down the street. Um, you can see uh, this picture up here uh, in the corner of our downtown in Mars Hill. Um, it is one road. That's it. Um, so you do have a lot of that more small town feel as opposed to big metropolitan areas, but it's still very nice. Um, things to do up in the mountain do center a lot around the outdoors. Um, there's a lot of hiking, a, a lot of water sports, including kayaking, whitewater rafting, all of those different opportunities. In the winter time, we do often have a lot of skiing, snowboarding, snow tubing, anything in that kind of area. Um, but we still do have, you know, music venues and parks and different things that you can be a part of if those are the things that you like to do for fun. Um, but it's still a little, little bit more small, a little more laid back. It's not quite as big as somewhere, say, like Charlotte, and that's perfectly okay, even though we do, do still have those bigger cities like Asheville right down the road. And then we'll talk about our professional experience that we can offer here in the mountains. Um, there are different opportunities for you up in the mountains than you might encounter other places. Um, the biggest thing that the mountains kind of thrive on as far as industry is concerned is tourism. Um, tourism is what we, we survive off of. A lot of people come here and visit. 
Um, there is some traffic because of it, but it's okay, you'll make it through. Um, the biggest thing that you can think of in the tourism industry, um, when you're thinking about degrees or what you might be interested in, hospitality. Um, if you're interested in the hospitality field, so things like the hotel industry, that's a great place to be if you're out in the mountains, um, as well as business. If you're looking at starting a small business, a shop or a restaurant or something like that, huge in the tourism industry. Another big thing for tourism is recreation management. So you're thinking your ski lodges and your different outdoor activity and experience adventure centers, huge, huge, huge industry up in the mountains. We also offer a lot in the environmental sciences, specifically with conservation um, and dealing with wildlife and how they interact with their habitats. Um, you also will be offered a lot of hands-on experience if you go to school up in the mountains because we are surrounded by so much nature and it is so readily available to you. We do still have your regular jobs just like everywhere else. We still need doctors and teachers and law enforcement. But up in the mountains, law enforcement might look a little bit different. You're looking at your first forest rangers, your uh, park services, your ranger services, um, and things like that. So if that's an industry that you're interested in, uh, coming to a mountain school, getting a criminal justice degree, and then transitioning into the forest service might be something that might be an opportunity for you. Um, networking in the mountains is a little bit different. Um, some people think that, you know, we aren't so big, so we don't have as many opportunities, but that's just not quite the case. Um, because everyone kind of knows everyone, you're bound to know somebody who knows somebody who's in your field, which offers you this kind of different, unique networking experience that's a little bit different in bigger cities. Um, and then the one thing I do want to hit on here at Mars Hill, we have the Cawthorne Center for Career Readiness. Now, multiple universities have a Career Readiness Center, but this is just something that we have here at Mars Hill that really connects you into your industry um, through hooking you up with internships, job search opportunities, and even doing grad school research. So if you're interested in any kind of job or internship while you're in school, specifically looking at what might be around you in the mountain areas, that Cawthorne Center for Career Readiness is an excellent resource for you. And we'll just pop over and look at some pictures of different industry here in the mountains. All right, so as you can see, we do have that Asheville City skyline. So we still do have some of that metropolitan feel if that's what you're looking at. But then again, we do have those uh, forest services. Um, Mission Health is represented, which is our conglomerate here. So we do have a hospital close by. It's about 30 minutes from our campus. Um, and then of course, the ski lodge. We do have a brewery there, Sierra Nevada. And then of course, a local restaurant. Just, just, just to give you an idea of what it might look like uh, for life up in the mountains. And now I will turn it over to Jasmine and she's gonna cover this city for you. Awesome. Thanks, Samantha. Uh, all the way over to kind of centrally located. Charlotte is very um, central to North Carolina, right on the border of South Carolina and close to uh, but um, when you're thinking about city life, uh, there's a lot of things that, you know, you should consider. Not every city is the same. Uh, you, you know, Charlotte is not the same as Los Angeles, which isn't the same as Atlanta, which isn't the same as Boone or Asheville um, or Wilmington. Um, also considering where a, a university or a college is located within the city, uh, there's a, a lot of difference between uh, a college that's right downtown uh, versus on the outskirts of the city. Um, if you're considering, maybe some of you on this uh, info session are considering not only the East Coast, but the West Coast as well. Those are very different vibes. Um, and then the size of the institution really plays a role as well. There's a big difference between a small school like Queens. We have about 2,500 students at Queens uh, located in a big city like Charlotte versus a big school uh, located in a big city. Think of maybe Emory in Atlanta. Those are two different uh, fields. But within any city, you're gonna get a lot of great professional uh, benefits, social benefits. There's really something for everybody, um, regardless of what you're interested in, whether it's you know outdoors or arts, sports, um, performing arts, whatever it might be. And, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And then really uh, a big thing for being in the city is accessibility, not only within the city, public transportation, but getting there. Uh, a lot of times these bigger cities will have large international airports. They'll have uh, bus systems that run out of state and out of region. So these are things to think about when considering a city. Um, some professional benefits to not only Charlotte, but bigger cities in general is you can see the Charlotte skyline here in this picture. Um, 
to be opportunities in whatever field you're interested in. Charlotte is the number two finance city in the United States, right behind New York City. So if you're looking to study anything in business, finance, marketing, management, all of that good stuff, um, opportunities, internships are really going to be right at your fingertips. There's no better place um, in my mind to study that. Same with healthcare. Um, there's huge healthcare centers. If you think you want to go into a field, um, you know, specific field like oncology, uh, go to college or university 30 miles from the nearest oncology unit, how are you going to get experience in that field? Um, you know, in a bigger city, you often have those healthcare facilities. Um, research opportunities. If you're interested in anything in the sciences or you want to do, want to do a lot of hands-on research, depending on the field. Again, if you're looking to do hands-on research in a forest, maybe you're going up to the mountains like Samantha mentioned, or I know Kelly will talk a little about the kind of the marine sciences, right? So maybe you're looking into that, but just general uh, research, you have a lot of opportunities in, in big cities. Um, and not only those more professional experiences but, um, or professional academic areas, but nonprofit work, humanities and social sciences, you can find so many of those uh, in big cities. Uh, where there are big cities, there are community needs and public health needs uh, that have to be served by nonprofit organizations. And then just networking. Um, you can kind of see that looks a little bit like a stock photo down on the right hand screen there, but um, it is a picture of a networking event in Charlotte. Every day of the week, uh, there's a networking event going on. And a lot of the colleges and universities, well, all of them, kind of like Samantha mentioned, will have uh, career centers, uh, but you're not limited to just that campus. There's things outside of the campus as well to benefit from. There's a lot professionally to take advantage of. And then socially as well, like I mentioned, there's just something for everyone. Um, whether you're into, maybe you're into going outside and getting on some parks or some greenways. Um, the picture you see over on the left-hand side of your screen, that's Freedom Park. Uh, so that's located just under a mile from Queens University's camp. It's often, uh, we'll walk over. I loved when I was a student at Queens, walking over to festival in the park or going for a jog on the greenway in the area. Um, so you can get, Sorts of things. If you're into art, um, there's tons of murals and, and you, maybe you explore into uh, NODA, which is the Arts District of Charlotte, or you're into a poetry slam or, or something like that. Maybe you're into those bigger uh, performing arts uh, situations, like you can see this is the Fillmore uh, down on the bottom screen, huge music venues, and this isn't the biggest one. You know, you have um, a lot of opportunity at PNC Pavilion or uh, music groups or performing arts will come to the Blumenthal Theater. I went to see Hamilton, the musical when it came to Charlotte. So like you have a lot to, to take advantage of. And then if you're like me, you probably love to go and watch sporting events. So um, when you're thinking about the city of Charlotte, you have the Carolina Panthers, the Charlotte Hornets, um, which would be two of the, the major known um, sports teams in the area. But then you also have professional lacrosse, um, AAA baseball, which is the picture you see here. That's BB&T Ballpark um, uptown where that's the Charlotte Knights play there and they're the AAA affiliate of the White Sox. Um, you have NASCAR, you have professional hockey and soccer and all these things. So new MLS team coming to Charlotte soon. So um, a lot of opportunity. And then lastly, um, on this social piece, like I mentioned, is just transit. So when you're thinking about being in the city, uh, a bigger city like Charlotte, you have the light rail system, which can take you to all different neighborhoods. You have bike share and scooter shares. You have Uber and Lyft that you can get literally at any time of the day. Um, and then you have Amtrak's that, come, you know, you can come in from Raleigh or from Virginia or wherever uh, to get to the city. And of course, International Airport that will allow you to travel um, either if you're coming to, to visit Charlotte or you're going to visit somebody else. Um, you have all of that there for you. So a lot of opportunities, again, both professionally and socially, um, and not having to choose between them and, and not necessarily having to choose between a big city or a small school, big school, you have all of that available to you. So I will throw it over to Allison. Awesome, thanks so much. Um, so welcome to Rockville, South Carolina. Uh, like I said before, we are about 30 minutes south of Charlotte. So, you know, um, 
really being a town right outside of the largest city in the Carolinas, you really get the best of both worlds. Um, you know, if you appreciate kind of a town feel, but still want to be able to enjoy all the perks that Jasmine just spoke about of a bit, you know, of a bigger city, you know, a town kind of like Rock Hill, um, you know, a town outside of a city might be really great for you. And, you know, obviously being so close, we're still, we are also very centrally located in the Carolinas. Um, but you also being in a, you know, in a town, typically you are going to find a lower cost of living, which will allow you to save or indulge more uh, in what we have to offer, if that's your thing too. Um, and finally, just, you know, kind of speaking specifically about Winthrop and Rock Hill, but I think you could say this about a lot of universities and towns, <clears throat> you know, all the employers, uh, you know, people in Rock Hill know Winthrop. You know, and it's a very, it's very reputable. It's very well known. Um, you know, it's been there for you know close to 100 years. You know, in Rock Hill, so that just means that our students will be more highly sought after. You know, in the area by employers, as there aren't as many you know institutions around it, and competing institutions, but also just because of the reputation that we've built um, in the town itself. But you know, and being the fifth largest city in South Carolina, we're continually growing and have even more opportunities. Um, and we're going to speak a little bit about that on the next slide. Awesome, thank you. So I just covered mine in pictures. Um, so professionally speaking, you know, very quick, you know, very quickly. Obviously, I wanted to. Jasmine already spoke so much about Charlotte and it was awesome, but I wanted to add that here because like I said, you know, we are right down the road. So everything Jasmine just spoke about, you know, you still have, it's not, it's not as close, you know, but it's right down the road. Um, so after you graduate, it's right there, internships and jobs during your time at Winthrop or, you know, in a town like Rock Hill, um, if you're kind of outside of a city, you have those opportunities, but within, you know, a town, so uh, within Rock Hill and at Winthrop, all of our arts programs are accredited. Um, so they're all accredited by the National Association of Schools for Art and Design. So the places like, like Blumenthal up in Charlotte, um, but also arts organizations within Rock Hill are really growing and they're really seeking out students you know, from Winthrop. Um, and so that, that type of professional opportunity for anyone really looking into visual and performing arts is very much available. Um, you know, and again, kind of being in a smaller town and having employers kind of grow their businesses in that, in that, um, in that field more, you know, more students are going to be sought after at, you know, in a smaller town. Um, and also, just speaking more specifically about Rock Hill, so you see the Panthers there. They are, they are going to play their games in Charlotte, but their training facility is moving to Rock Hill, South Carolina. Um, so one kind of cool thing about a town and, and a developing town, um, the, a lot of businesses will move to those towns because it's a lower cost of operation. Um, and so the Panthers facility is actually moving to Rock Hill, South Carolina, which as you can imagine in the next two or three years, um, it's gonna offer a lot of internships and a lot of jobs for our students. And you also might get the chance to you know, meet the Carolina Panthers. So I think that's pretty awesome. Um, and finally, uh, you know, we, like I said, we, we are continually, developing. Um, we, as of right now, are the fifth largest in South Carolina. Um, and part of that development is really renovating a lot of the old spaces that we that we have. So we have Rock Hill is an old textile mill town. Um, and so in the last, you know, the next couple of years in the last year or so, we've developed this area called Knowledge Park, um, which is just, it's going to be a bunch of shops and restaurants and, you know, new apartments. It's going to connect our campus with downtown where there are a lot of other events happening and a lot of other employers in that area. Um, but even right now we have our new exercise science facility. We have a sport and recreation center. So again, just really continually kind of trying to offer more and more to the people of Rock Hill, um, but also to our students professionally speaking with employers around the town. And then I just also want to speak quickly about our, you know, we have socially going on in, in Little Old Rock Hill. that one on there, Allison? Can you see that slide? Yeah, I see it now. Okay, just took a second. <laughs> I don't know if it was Sorry just... about that, y'all. <laughs> oh, no, no worries. I thought it might have just been me. Um, socially, so yeah, so, you know, we're, we're a little bit smaller, and, you know, when you go to a town, um, it was kind of like what Samantha was saying. It's, it's, it is a, it's a town feel, um, but we are 
centrally located in the Carolinas. So we're a drive away from a lot of different experiences, you know, a couple hours from the beach, a couple hours from the mountains, um, right down the road from a city. But even within Rock Hill, we have a lot going on, um, you know, and so you still get that community vibe um, and kind of like what Samantha was saying uh, for her town, like a lot of people know each other. Um, so it's pretty, pretty easy to kind of find your community within Rock Hill, um, but we have a lot to offer. Uh, we have our river walk district, which is just you know, a lot of outdoors activity. So all of these pictures you see here um, are, are in Rock Hill or someone that from Rock Hill took. I wanted to make sure it was it was very accurate to our town. I actually took the one of the river. I thought it was very pretty. So I wanted to put it in there um, and brag on my photography skills a little bit. Uh, but we have our river walk. We have tons of parks. I think um, towns a lot of times will really try to pride, you know, we really pride ourselves ourselves in, in investing into our environment um, and making things look really pretty and really nice for, for our uh, uh, civilians. So we have a lot of parks. Um, we're very much a sports oriented town as well. Um, so a lot of that going on. We have, we're really growing, like I said, kind of in, in the arts field. So this mural you see is right on our main street. Uh, we, we have more and more of those being commissioned to local artists, both in Rock Hill and actually in Charlotte, which is really awesome because we're also supporting local artists. Um, and again, you know, I put the apartment complex here because we are building more and more um, apartments for like young people and for students, but it's still going to be at a little bit of a lower cost of living. Um, and uh, as far as transit goes, you know, like like Jasmine said, being in a city, you're always going to get pretty accessible transportation. Um, but I will say within Rock Hill in the last couple of years or so, we have really tried to develop that to make it more accessible. And so now we have our bike share system, which connects downtown to campus. And we have our free electric bus system, which connects everyone to any part of Rock Hill. And so we're really excited about that because you know, we do wanna be more accessible for people. Um, and finally, this picture you see of the concert that is in Rock Hill. <laughs> um, so we do have those things happening around town. Obviously they're not happening as much right this second, uh, but we do have those things happening all around town. Um, and, you know, kind of building that, again, building that art scene up in, in, the, in the good little town of Rock Hill, South Carolina. So uh, just kind of kind of to conclude, um, being being in a town outside of a city, like I said, you really do kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, you get that smaller smaller community feel, but then you're just right down the road from a big city if you want it. Uh, so thank you very much. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to Kelly. Awesome. Well, all right. I am here to kind of finalize everything up. Um, you know, so as you see on the screen there, I am representing the coast. Uh, UNC Wilmington is considered, again, the, the, the coastal university of North Carolina. We are about five miles from Wrightsville Beach. So we, you know, we're not smack dab right there at the ocean, but it's a very quick drive to get out there. Um, you know, but we're not just the beach. You know, a lot of times when people hear UNC Wilmington, oh, you guys are at the beach. Yes, correct. We are about five miles from there. However, we have so much more to offer you um, than just being out by the water all the time because yes, at Wilmington, it does get cold. Um, it may not get as cold as it does in the mountains, uh, but it does get cold. So, you know, not, not every day is gonna be a beach day for our students. So we do have several other activities that students can, you know, be a part of. Um, we have aquariums, we have museums. Fort Fisher is one of the last kind of island uh, bodies of water that is close to Wilmington. Um, and that is where the aquarium is held as well as the museum. So if you're looking for something to do, maybe you're not a beach person, you don't have to be a beach person to go to UNCW. Um, but, you know, so we try to keep other activities available. Uh, besides the pier that you see on the bottom of the screen, you also see our riverfront. The riverfront is the first place that you actually see when you drive into Wilmington, North Carolina. There's two bridges that can connect you into the city and both of them, you're going to see the riverfront and you're going to see the North Carolina battleship. Uh, so a couple of activities. There's a lot of dining there, plenty of shopping. So if you're like myself and like to spend money when you go shop when you're on vacation, uh, you know, you would be able to do that within seconds of driving into Wilmington. So uh, again, just a lot of exploration for for people and their their students, their parents, and when they come and visit in any in any tourists as well. 
I really wanted to pinpoint a, a couple of different places that are just incredible for students uh, for their applied learning and internship opportunities. The first one that you see on the left corner, that is our Crest Research Center. That is available to students as well as community members. This is a place where you can actually rent out a space or just kind of uh, take a space for yourself to do research opportunities. So for our students, a lot of times they use this facility when they have a project for their class, specifically something in the biology realm where they may need to have space because it is a whole lab, a science lab in there for them. So they, there's also a, a freshwater observatory that flows into the Crest Research Park. So people that are testing water, maybe there's algae that they want to test, you know, they have that right there for them to be able to test those and have that opportunity. Down at the bottom is the Center for Marine Science. This is also extremely popular for anyone that's considering marine biology, oceanography, uh, coastal engineering, anything like that. This center is actually not even open to the public. Um, it is only available um, and only open uh, once a year for student, for people that are not students. And that's when we have our open house. Um, so even for this year, since everything is virtual, um, it won't even be able to be open for that. So, um, so right now, just for students, we have live dive tanks in there, uh, fresh water observatories for the students, and there's also fresh water animals there. Uh, so students, again, this is another way for them to get that hands-on learning, get that experience, we want students a lot of times now jobs are looking for experience and not just the degree so we want to provide those hours for that hands-on learning that they can add to their resume that these employers are looking for um, and lastly we a really cool opportunity again for students especially our film study students uh, that's very popular here at uncw is our screen gym studios we do have a Screen Gym Studios located in Wilmington, North Carolina. So anyone that wants to become a director, wants to be a screenwriter, wants to be an actor or actress, um, you know, not just theater, but, you know, Screen Gym Studios can be a great place for them to practice. Um, people, you know, we have, they have tours of different TV shows that they have hosted and filmed in North Carolina, but we have do, we do also have a lot of students that do uh, follow up with their internships through the summer there. So uh, you get the best of both worlds. You get to spend the summer in Wilmington and be at the beach all the time, but you also get to experience um, and really get a uh, hands-on learning within the Screen Gym Studios here at UNCW. Professional development. So these, again, are just some pictures. I think pictures uh, tell a story better than words do sometimes, and I know it grabs the attention of uh, potential students, uh, especially our younger generation. So just to kind of go through these uh, pictures here, these are some of the most popular uh, mate, uh, popular degrees and then also development in Wilmington. So these are easily found jobs in you uh, at the Wilmington area. So engineering, uh, any type of engineering that you can think of, uh, you know, that there's a place for you there. Uh, oceanography, of course, with us being right near the water, anything to do with the water, whether it's studying animals in the water, studying the coral reef in the water, studying algae in the water, or the bacteria in water, there's something that you can do here at UNCW and in Wilmington once you finish out your degree. Healthcare is also very popular. That's continuing uh, to continue to grow. We have one of the largest nursing programs in North Carolina. So those that do your clinical hours and once you do become an RN or come an uh, NP, once you finish your master's, we do have New Hanover Med Medical Center. So plenty of hospitals and opportunities for you to be able to live in Wilmington and continue that, you know, that job and that profession once graduation, once you're completed with graduation. Banking. Uh, we have Cameron School of Business, uh, one of the number one business schools in North Carolina as well. Uh, so anyone that's interested in management, finance, accounting, uh, you, there, there are so many banks and, and corporations within uh, the city of Wilmington. And we have an executive network program specific to our students that help them connect um, and network with professions uh, in Wilmington area because of your professors that become a good reference for you to the point to helping you find that job once you've graduated from college. And then lastly is the IT world. And I think this can speak across the board. IT is continuing to grow everywhere in the United States. Technology is just kind of taking over the map. Um, so anything IT, computer science, you will also see some professional, job, uh, professional jobs available in that department in Wilmington as well. And this goes without saying, uh, obviously for social benefit, you've got the beach and you have the peers. Um, you know, there's 
plenty of fishing. Uh, people go and surf. I won't say that we have the heaviest waves and, you know, you know we're not Hawaii by any means, uh, but I do see people go out there and try to surf on the waves that we do have. Maybe a boogie board is the better option here. Um, we have concerts out on the beach. We have uh, welcome weeks for our students and we have a special events where we actually tape off parts of the Ocean Boulevard area where only our students are allowed to go. So the public's not even uh, welcome in that area. Fine dining, uh, Dockside is one of the restaurants that always comes to mind if you are wanting to find somewhere to eat but want to be on the ocean at the same time. You always want to look up Dockside, one of the best restaurants uh, available. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but we also have the battleship, uh, the, the North Carolina battleship. It's located at the riverfront. Um, actually, the cotton exchange that's right uh, to the right of the battleship, that's also in the riverfront. Uh, there's actually a couple of different shops. It's all outdoor, so you kind of, you're inside and outside and kind of the same thing because it's all in one building. Uh, but it's multiple different shops as you go through, so different boutiques kind of like an outlet center, um, but it's just kind of a different experience uh, at the beach. So I always love to kind of check that out when, I, when I'm there. Um, and lastly is the concert festival. So our concert festivals are usually all outside. Um, we have an Azalea Festival each year around April. That's when our flowers start to bloom. Um, so this is something we do at the end of each night during the Azalea Festival. So uh, a lot of outdoor experiences, even on campus, we have a lot, a lot of outdoors. Most of our students like to be outdoors. They, they bring their, you know, hammocks and they connect them to the trees. We have people that like to skateboard, you know, uh, people like that to fall off their skateboard. And we, <laughs> and we have people that are, that bring their dogs on campus. We're just a very open environment. So, um, you know, we, we may not be, you know, the, the reserve parks are, and, uh, are known for our parks, but there are several ones that are on campus. So if you like to exercise, but you don't want to be in the gym, maybe you want to be outside. We have the Wilmington Loop, which is right there at Wrightsville Beach where you are actually running right, right a mile from the beach uh, location. We have a park that's about five miles from campus, if that, that's, uh, that has uh, beautiful creeks and areas where you can bring your dogs if you have uh, animals. Uh, so there's all, you know, a little bit of everything for everyone. So uh, yes, we're close to the beach. Yes, we have the ocean, but we try to center in the city with the coast all in one. So um, if you have, you know, specific questions or have any specific questions for any of us, um, you know, that you that you want to know more about the location that we're in, please, please feel free um, to to get to sh uh, shoot those out to us and we'd be happy to answer those for you. I'm going to leave this screen up because um, this has our uh, contact information for our specific admissions offices. Um, I want to do as minimal clicking as possible. Can one of you ladies, Kelly, Allison, or Samantha, if there's questions like shout them out, I just, I'm not going to click it. I'm scared with my screen share. <laughs> yes, so we actually just got a question. Um, so this one right here says, so I've, she has one question for each university. For me, LGBTQ uh, clubs and organizations are just important to me as location is uh, because I want to feel safe wherever I go. So I just want to know if and what kind of clubs and organizations uh, for that group um, are offered. She said, sorry, it's, um, it's not really about this session, but just wanted to know if they were really available. Um, so I'll go first real quick. Wilmington does have uh, a club for uh, LBGTQ uh, community. We actually have several, um, and we have safe environments, safe spaces, and safe professors as well for our university. Um, I'll, I'll go as well. Um, and I know that at the end, you, Samantha, you said, uh, sorry, it's not really about the session, but I, I actually think it really is about the session. Uh, you know, it's a, it is a part of, of where you're living, right? If you if you feel comfortable and feel safe and feel included. Uh, but with that being said, yes, Winthrop, absolutely. We have um, LGBTQ um, clubs, organizations. And I will also say um, up in Charlotte, I know several actually work with a couple, um, you know, they're more youth oriented if you want to get involved there as well. But I, I will say, um, I think that's a very important question. And I'm glad that you asked that. But same as Kelly, um, our professors, faculty, staff, uh, we have safe zone ally training as well. I can hop on next, Jasmine. Um, here at Mars Hill, we do have uh, an LGBTQ club. And of course, just like everybody else, we do have those safe zones, those safe professors. Um, so you do have that. Um, another big perk is that we're right outside of Asheville and Asheville has a very large LGBTQ community um, and they have a lot of outreach organizations specifically for that community. So 
even on our campus, if you're still trying to get more involved, still kind of get hooked in with that outreach and just really be a part of that kind of community, then Asheville is right there. Um, so it's super close, super available, but still we have a growing LGBTQ um, community on our campus and it's something we pride ourselves on, so. Yeah, I would say the same thing about the clubs and organizations. Those are um, very common on Queens's campus. We have safe zone trained um, staff and all of our um, student life and residence life team members are uh, safe zone trained. I would just say two things that are a little bit different for us. Charlotte has a huge pride parade every year, um, except for this past year, which was very sad because of COVID. But um, it's a great opportunity. We have students who um, go and, and intern with that uh, committee or obviously attend. And just lastly, I would say um, personally as an LGBTQ student at Queens, when I was a student there and as an LGBTQ staff member at Queens, I feel 100 and 10% supported and always felt that way as a student. So it's a great important question to ask. Um, so I applaud you for asking it and you should continue to ask those questions. And I just want to second uh, what Jasmine said as well. Um, um, the Pride Parade actually in Charlotte is like the largest parade in the Carolinas. Um, and I too, as an LGBTQ staff member here at Winthrop feel very, very comfortable um, and very, uh, very safe and included. So thank you for your question. I appreciate you asking that. So the next question is, uh, which universities have a nursing program? Um, and so for Wilmington, we do have a nursing program available for our students pre licensure and then RN to VSN as well, and then a couple of master's programs. Queens has a nursing program and is one of our most popular degrees at Queens. Same here at Mars Hill. We have a brand new city of the art nursing building with skills and simulation labs, and we really are close to the nearest hospital. So you do get that hands on experience with clinicals. We do not have a nursing program <laughs> with <Winthrop. laughs> We have a lot of pre-professional and uh, pre-med programs, but, but no nursing program. All right. Uh, our next question is, so I guess really just one of us can answer this, but they were asking what, what, what is CACRO um, and what does getting a membership mean opposed to registering for college normally? Um, so really CACRO is just a, a tool for potential students to learn more about the universities that they may want to apply for. Um, but this is not how you would apply to college. Um, this again is just a helpful tool. You can register for the CACRO events to learn more, get on the panel, learn more about the panels that we host as well as individualized um, institutions as they do their uh, information sessions throughout their next couple of weeks. Uh, but once you choose a school that you'd like to register or slash apply for, um, you would then, uh, you would then uh, of course, need to be able to go through the application process to apply for that university. I hope that answered that question the way that you needed it to. So it looks like I have about three more minutes before we are wrapped up here. So um, if there are any questions, please go ahead and type those in um, so we can get them answered before we finish up today. Thank you for your question, Samantha. Okay, um, so if there aren't any other uh, questions, just want to say thank you again for joining us this afternoon. Uh, when you close this window, there's going to be a link to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of the many sessions that is hosted by CACRO. Uh, and again, that's uh, C-A-C-R-A-O dot org. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions that are happening throughout this week. And in about a week, you'll also be able to find 
the recording for this session as well as all the other session recordings. So you can come back to this um, next week if you uh, would like to uh, view some of this information again. And thank you uh, to our panelists and to all of you for attending. Have a great day.